Hare Krishna. So uh, my name is Mukunda Goswami. For those of you who don't know, Mukunda Goswami, and I live here. And I'm uh, from Portland, Oregon. I went to Reed uh, College in Portland, Oregon. I'm very good, and uh, I live here. And uh, I'm going to talk for, for about 20 minutes, and then we'll have a bit of a, have a group chat. Um, <clears throat> first thing I, 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 I want to say is that uh, some time ago, I, I lectured before a group that was about a third of the people were from, from Harvard University, a third of the people were from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, and about a third of the people were from Boston University. In that lecture, I didn't use the word God because I, I used the I term G word because God is very unpopular, especially in those circles. Uh, that was about 10 years ago. It was a good lecture, and it, I found that many of the people had... Um, had, had read the books that I was lecturing from, and uh, even if he answers some of the questions that some of the people posed better than, than I could even answer them, because they had, had, had thoroughly read and understood what the literature was all about. There's, a, there's an absolute nature to uh, Krishna consciousness, which is a, a, a very unpopular thing. However, citations are required for almost everything. And universities, and even uh, recently, I, I was doing something on Wikipedia, and they require a lot of citations, sort of what they call neutral um, citations from published books, from newspapers, from articles, and academic journals, and so on and so forth. So, whatever we do, it seems that citations are required. There's a, there's a, a concept in some universities known as plagiarism, where if someone in a, in, a, in a thesis or dissertation seems to be what's called unduly influenced by or stealing from uh, another publication that's called plagiarism and some universities have even threatened to revoke people's master's degrees because they found instances of plagiarism in them. In Vedic literature it's, it's a common thing to, to use a figure of speech to stand on the shoulders of great uh, intellectual giants who have gone before to see ahead and to see the future and to see various things. It's very unpopular to cite something biblical or in, in, in spiritual literature or scripture as an absolute or a unchallengeable dictum, so to speak. And some people think that that's too doctrinaire. I, I lived with this kind of thinking for maybe 45 years or so. Even though there are some things that are unchallengeable, they're absolute, there are many other things that are relative and unchallengeable and not absolute. Anyway, that's, that's another topic that, that we can discuss later. Before we have our, our uh, group meditation, I want to... Uh, talk about a particular instance, it's a history, when when Krishna was living in, in... How many of you, by the way, have been to India before? Yeah, some. So there's a, there's a city that's um, kind of south, southeast, or, yeah, more, more south than east of Delhi, called Vrindavan. I don't know if you have, have any of you ever been there to Vrindavan? Have you been there? Anyway, in, in that area, or abroad, it's called, in the, in the greater area of Vrindavan, there's a Yavat, and there's another place called Nandagram. And in the Nandagram area, very near uh, Nandagram, which is a hill, there's a there's a, a, a lake called um, Pavan Sarovar. People go there once a year to bathe in the, in the holy waters to free themselves of various karmic sins. So one of the instances that took place at, uh, thousands of years ago, when Krishna was a young boy, Krishna saw his mother was, was, was making some very delectable savories called samosas and pakoras. And Krishna was a young boy, he was maybe seven or eight years old. He was saying, he said to his mother, he said, those are those look very interesting. Uh, can I have one of those? And she, and she said, oh no, they're, they're for your father. He's going on a long journey. So his father took him a little bit later in hand and um, he had this bag of, of foodstuffs with him on a stick. And uh, again, Krishna asked me, he said, can I have just one, one of your samosas? Nandaraj, who was his father, replied by saying, oh 
oh no, I, I have to have these for my long journey. I'm going to Prayag. Prayag is a long distance away from, from Vrindavan. Uh, over a thousand kilometers. So, as they were going down to, before he was going to Vrindavan, he said to Krishna, he said, I want to bathe in, in, in this Pavan Sarovar lake. Because it was a custom that can't be done. Just as they were about to bathe in the lake, they, they saw a man emerge from the water who was dressed, and he was dressed very opulently, and he seemed to be a very handsome and very interesting and charismatic person, and he was laughing aloud. So Krishna asked his father, he said, who is that man? Nandaraj said, I don't know, let's ask him. So both of them approached this man, they approached the man, and they asked him, Nanda Maharaj asked him, what is your good name, sir? The man said, replied by saying, my name is, is uh, Prayagraj. Nanda Raj said to him, what, what kind of a name is that? Prayagraj. He said, I am the personification of Prayag. Prayag is the, is the place where the, it's a confluence of rivers, where the Saraswati, the Ganga, and the, and the uh, Yamuna all meet. He said, I'm and, he said, and he said, well, why are you coming here? Why have you come all the way to Vrindavan? Nandaraj told him. He said, I've come here because every, every day people come to, to, to uh, where I am, the confluence of these rivers. Pilgrims come here. And they, they, they leave their sinful reactions here. So I'm overloaded with sinful reactions from all these pilgrims. So I come here to be in, in, in uh, Bhavan Sarovra once a year to get purified. Soon after, Nandaraj pointed out other personalities that were bathing in that, in that lake. And he said, this is, is Ganga Devi. And uh, here is, that was a lady, a beautiful goddess, personification of, of the Ganga, of Ganges River. And then he said, here is, is uh, Haridwar Das and someone else. So there were several uh, uh, of these personalities who were bathing in this river at that time of the year. It's the beginning of a, of a festival. It's usually the beginning of May. And they were all for, there for the same reason. They were all personifications of holy places, holy rivers. And they were there to, to, to get purified of all the sins that the pilgrims had left with them. Then Nandaraj took his bath in, in, in this uh, lake. And, and then they, and he started to walk back. And Krishna, as a, as a young boy, said, Nandaraj, Father, why? Um, he said, he said, uh, are, he said, you're soon leaving for for Prayag, and, and uh, he said, no, I'm, I'm not going to to, uh, to go to Prayag. He said, I'm going to to uh, return to my home after bathing in this river. And he said, well, can I have then one of your samosas? He had this bag of of, uh, of savories that he was going to take. He said, no. He said. He said, uh, you can't have one. I think I'll just give you the whole bag. And he said, why are you going to give me the whole bag? He said, well, I, I'm not going to, to cry out. And Krishna said to him, so why are you not going to cry out? And, and Nandamara said to him, he said, I've changed my mind. And because he had changed his mind, he said to Krishna, as a young boy, here, please take all of these, not just, just one, but the whole, the whole container. Krishna was very satisfied. So uh, I think we're, we'll chant some together. And uh, if you have any, any uh, comments or questions, now's the time to, to bring them up. Yeah. Um, do you have beats for everybody? Does everyone have beats? Sunday piece was canceled. 
Oh, I think we're a little bit stranded here because the, I think the water's over that bridge that goes out and comes in. I don't know how far, but it's, it's far enough that the Sunday feast was, was canceled. So this is a good place to be stranded. If you're going to be stranded yeah. any place, this is a good place to be stranded. <laughs> So uh, the bead with a with a little tassel on the end of it is called the summit bead, and and uh, if we start chanting, these are the words by the way for the mantra: Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So if if uh, anyone doesn't know what this mantra is, there, there it is. So what we do is on the third finger and on the on the thumb of the right hand, we chant uh, one. On one beat, one mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And then move to the next beat and do the same thing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Some people, when they chant, they don't they don't chant in a kind of stationary way. They, they roll the beads back and forth between the thumb and the third finger. So you can do that. So if we start on this, next to the summit bead, and chant one mantra, and then go to the next one, we'll chant, there's 108 beads on each string of beads. We'll finish approximately at the same time. So if we begin chanting, we chant together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, and to the next one. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 
So whether you chant in, in, uh, with music or with instruments or, or this way, which is called jata, it brings, a, it brings a feeling of ecstatic bliss or purification. And the purpose of chanting is to purify the mind. According to the Bhagavad Gita, Bhumir Apona Lovayu Kamonu Bhuriya Cha, there are eight material elements and there are five there are, are uh, the senses. The senses are the sense of hearing, the sense of, of touching, the sense of smelling, the sense of seeing. Um, those are some of the knowledge-acquiring senses. The mind is also one of, is considered by, in Vedic literature one of the senses. And according to Bhagavad Gita, the mind can be our best friend or it can be our greatest enemy, depending on, 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 uh, on how it's, it is controlled. 
even more subtle than the mind is the intelligence, and even more subtle than the intelligence is the ego, and even more subtle than the ego is the, is the soul. The soul is the essence of, of all living entities, of all living beings, it's called Atma in Sanskrit, the soul. So this chanting puts us in touch with the soul, and it brings a state of, of, of happiness or, or well-being, because the soul is always in that state of happiness and well-being. The soul is, is part of Krishna, or part of God, and therefore it's always in that state of, of happiness. According to the Vedic literature, Krishna, or, or God, never has a bad day. And this lake that I was talking about, Pavan Saroga, Krishna would, would swim underwater a great distance, almost half a kilometer long, to, uh, to swim to the other side where, where the young gopis were, were uh, playing. He would sometimes pull them under the water, like pulling on their legs to the amusement of other so, uh, uh, according to Vedic literature, Krishna is not only the supreme being, but he's the supreme prankster, he's the supreme intelligence, and he's the supreme chief. If one tries to cheat God or cheat Krishna, Krishna will cheat even greater. Once there was a, a photograph in Music Magazine, by the way, which is not printing any longer, and it had a picture of the founder of the Krishna movement pointing his finger, and it was a quote underneath the, the picture saying that if you try to cheat Krishna, you will be cheated because Krishna is a greater cheater. That was the quote. So if, uh, if you don't already have these and if you want to keep them, they have to be kept in a kind of... They're, they're considered sacred and they, they, they're not really supposed to be touching the floor. That's why we have rags. And if you want, you can, you can get them from the temple story. Thank you, sir. Um, all right, my dear friends, if anybody wants to stay back as opposed to doing work, we just have a chat with Maharaj. You're most welcome to. Not you, though. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think Kirsty has a crew Nara, Erika, and Haika. And there's a few with Lali, isn't it? Anybody else? You've got much to be still with Lali. Anybody else who's not with Lali or not with Kirsty, I'm going to go up and maybe Enrique can also, and we'll take you guys up the top and we'll uh, deal with all those mangoes that we picked last week. You know, they're freezing, we'll chop them up or pickle them or whatever. And uh, can you come with me now? So Kirsty's telling me also that um, they amalgamated. Lunch and dinner today, so there'll just be one big feast, and nobody else can get on the farm, so we'll be able to eat it all. And that will be at 4 30, I think, so a little earlier, so half lunch, half dinner, kind of thing at 4 30. So I don't think they'll serve lunch. They might be a little bit up there, but not properly. Is that okay? Can we eat mangoes in the meantime? Totally, sir. All right, my friends.